So the first thing that we're going to go over is screening the squat. So this is the, this is the first thing you're going to do before you even start to think about progressing to a more difficult squat exercise and before you start looking at any kind of compensation patterns. So the squat is just a bilateral exercise that's going to be trained in the glutes, quadriceps, hamstrings, and the erectors. We're going to start out just with the body weight squat. So I'll show you what it's going to look like from each angle. So it's hips back, flexing at the hips, flexing at the knees, extending at the hips, extending at the knees. And from this side. So if your athlete or a client can do that fine, then we can start talking about progressions, moving on to adding weight moving on to doing like barbell back squat or stuff like that. But you generally will see some common compensation patterns in the squat, especially for people that haven't done it before, people that have kind of like muscle imbalances. There's usually four reasons why people have problems with any exercise. One would be neural. What I mean by that is they've never done the exercise before, so that has to be coached. Two, it might be structural. Maybe they have like some hip problems won't let them go down deep enough. They might have muscle imbalances, so maybe you watch see an instance in the squat where muscle imbalances might be a problem. And it might just be general weakness. So if you see someone do a squat and we'll go over it, they're going back like this and they start to fall backwards like that, it could be some kind of weakness of the calves. But the first thing I always look at is it's neural, it's coaching, they've never done it before, we gotta work on that movement pattern. So let's start talking about some common problems that you can see. Let we'll me just start at the ankles. So one common problem that you'll see, the person might be drifting too far forward, just kind of going as far as they can, dorsiflexing as far as they can, and that's it. So what I like to teach is really sitting back in the squat. So you might put someone on a box, I would say outside shoulder width. If you're doing a box squat, typically you can go a little bit wider. So they would really focus on pushing their butt back first. So you can use a ball for this. Like right over there, for instance, just have to be quiet for your athlete stand here. Push their butt back into the wall. So push the butt back, flex the knees. Push the butt back, flex the knees. One more time. Okay. So that, that's the first thing I would do. If I'm looking at the ankles, if their knees are coming too far forward, I would probably put them on a box, get them used to sitting back. And this movement is actually pretty difficult at first for most people. So they might get here, like I said before, they might end up falling back. So what we could do is stack like the plates a little bit higher. Maybe they can only go to like, like right here, and that would be how high your box would be in the beginning. And as they kind of get used to doing it, you start taking away boxes. In fact, you could have like three plates right here, have them do like five good squats, and then as they master the squat, you keep taking away a plate, and sometimes that clears it up. So that's probably more of a neural problem than a muscle uh, weakness problem. So that's something that you might see at the ankles. Other things that you might see over here. Moving on up to the knees. So a lot of times if you see someone squatting, this might happen on the way down, we might see the knees cave in. Or they might go down fine and then on the way up, the knees cave in. So that's called a valgus collapse or medial knee displacement. Again, the first thing I would say is maybe they don't know that their knees aren't supposed to do that, so that's neural, so that's coaching. So you might just put your hands on the outside of their knees. And when they're going down, you can put them right here and say, push your knees into my hand, just to prevent that medial knee displacement. So if we rolled out, coaching as a problem, so you tell them that their knees aren't supposed to do that, and their knees still do that. What I would do, you can come over here. So you can elevate the heels. If they squat, and that clears up, so all you gotta use is like a 10 pound plate, and that clears up. It could be some kind of calf, tibialis anterior muscle imbalance. I'll link up a study to that. If it doesn't go away, it might be some kind of hip weakness. Okay, so those are that's kind of like a test that I'll use. If it goes away with the heel lift, 
then it's probably the ankles and we might want to work on stretching the calves, work on doing some ankle mobility drills, and see if that clears it up. Okay, so that's mistake number two that I generally see. The next mistake that I see would be lumbar flexion during the squat. So what I mean by that is you'll see like at a bottom portion of the squat, my low back will flex and it looks like my butt's like tucking under. So probably by this point, am I? Yeah. So you'll see flexion right there. So typically if someone can make it to like parallel or even slightly below without the low back rounding, then it's not really a big deal, but you might see people squatting and they start to flex before they even get to parallel. So if we have like a bar on the back and the low back starts flexing, that's probably not a good thing. So with this, it could be a ton of different things. So if we're lacking ankle mobility, so if our knees can't come forward at all, typically what happens in people that aren't trained, that they'll go this far, their knees can't travel any further, so they have to make up for it with the hips, and then once the hips can't go any further, they gotta make up for it with the low back. So ankles could be an issue. I might have someone squat with a heel lift. That sometimes helps that problem. So if they're flexing their low back, see if it changes with the heel lift, just like how I did over there. The next thing that I might do, just see what happens when you front load them. So when you have a weight in their hand, so this is gonna help engage some of those anterior core muscles might be the problem. See if they can go a little bit lower. It just kind of serves as a counterbalance. Yeah. It also might be a structural issue which you're not really going to change. So maybe their low backs flexing just because they're how their hip muscular or hip bones are put together. Um, they might have tight hamstrings as well and that kind of I guess considered a muscle imbalance. First thing I'm always looking at is they don't know that they're not supposed to do that again. So keep your back straight. Then I see what happens with the heel lift, and then I see what happens when I front load. Usually that clears it up, one of those three issues. Okay, next, we can actually go over there. So if your athlete is leaning too far forward on the squat, you might use a wall as feedback. So let, let's say that they're doing this, like they're squatting, but you're going like that, leaning way too far forward. So you can just put them up against the wall, put the hands down, hips back, knees out. So the wall serves as feedback. If I'm leaning too far forward, I'm just going to be hitting my head on the wall. Oh. So that's another problem. Lean too far forward, bring it to the wall. Next problem, you, your person might not be getting appropriate depth. Okay. So the first thing that I do is I take gravity out of the picture to see if it's actually like a mobility or a stability issue. So you can do this a number of ways. Two of my favorite ways, we just hold on to something, drop down into a squat. If I can get that low, then it's probably a stability problem because this is providing all the stability for me instead of a mobility issue. You can also go down on the ground. We can bring our knees right to our chest probably a stability issue. So you just want to work on engaging some of the muscles that aren't working as well. If the person's only going to like right here, and that's literally as far as they can squat without compensating, then it could be a mobility issue that could be structural. Usually in that case, I might try some like hip mobility drills for a couple weeks, but if that's really not doing anything, we refer out or we find an alternative exercise to the squat. So that covers a lot of common mistakes in the squat, oh, oh, yeah. and that's what I look for in the screening yeah, portion of my squat. So in the next video, we'll go over common progressions to the squat, and we'll also talk about how to work around a client's or, client or an athlete's injury. So that's good for now.